Hey guys, welcome back to Patreon Contraptions. Today, I'm showing you one of my favorite subjects, how to build a cardboard boat. Now, I've been building cardboard boats for over five years and have many first place trophies and even a couple best in shows for my boats. Now, we're going to focus on three main areas today. We're going to focus on the design phase, the construction phase, and then we're going to wrap it up with some final details and what you need to look for. Also, if you stick all the way to the end, I'll even give you three of my pro tips that'll help your team do much better on the water. Let's get started. So we start off every cardboard boat project pretty much the same way, with the design phase. And this is where you take and you write out and you draw out the plans for your boat. Now, when you're drawing out your plans, you have to remember that your crew has to fit in this boat. So, the number one thing you need to do is figure out how many people you want on your crew. In most cardboard boat races that I've been involved in, the max out is eight people per boat. So, if you're going to have eight people in your boat, you need to have space for eight people. And that includes having the space for them to row. You see, when you're kneeling down, as most do in a cardboard boat, you're taking up more space than if you're just sitting down. Like if I sit down, I'm taking up maybe a two by two foot area. If I'm kneeling, I need about 30 inches for the extension from when I'm rowing all the way to when I'm done and my elbow comes out. Otherwise, you'll be slamming your friend in the face with your elbow. Good guideline is about 30 inches long to 18 inches wide per, per person rowing. It's just a little square you can chalk out on your plans. Next up in the design phase, we need to look at how fast you want this boat to be, or does it need to carry more cargo for your looks? Say you're building a fire truck. You're probably gonna not be going for the fastest boat in the lake because you're gonna want a square hull to make that fire truck look authentic. So what are the three types of hulls you could use? Well, you could use a box hull, which is like the fire truck I just dis discussed, it's an essential rectangle, and they don't go very fast in the water. The next type would be like the other extreme. It would be a canoe hull. And if you build a boat like a canoe, it's by far the fastest design. The water will flow fluidly around it, and you won't have that much drag. Now, the third type of hull is a little easier to build, and it's right in between the two. It's a triangle point on one side, and triangle point on the other side with a box hull in between. It makes it a little simpler when you're building it because your dividers are the same width. And on the subject of dividers, when you're building a cardboard boat, it's a good idea to add dividers into your plan. Now, what a divider is, is it's a compartmentalization of the boat. By compartmentalization, I mean it seals one area off so that if, say, one compartment floods, and you'll see this in my other cardboard boat videos, if one compartment floods, the other compartments are going to be completely fine because you've got this wall stopping the water from getting where that rower is into where the next rower is. It also adds structural integrity. Fantastic! Now we're on to my favorite part of any build. The actual build! Construction. Hands-on building, which is just always fun. So, let's get down to the basics first. You've got to have a budget and you've got to stick to that budget when it comes to construction. Now, I've done it both ways. I've done it bare bones, minimum paint, minimum glue, as cheap as you can go. And I've also done it top of the line, best glue, best paint. So, I've had both ways here. How much of a difference does it make? In my opinion, go with the bare bones. Unless you really, really want to have a super show quality boat, go with the bare bones paint and glue you could possibly buy. And as far as getting the glue, I recommend Elmer's glue. You can buy it by the gallon. It's the cheapest glue around that I know of. Find a cheaper one, comment below. I want to know about it. If you want to take a quick step up from Elmer's with not spending too much, you can go to their wood grade glue, and that'll do a little bit better as it's a little more water resistant. That in mind, remember you're only going to be in the water for probably 15 minutes tops, five minutes per race max. And that's if you do three races, which is kind of uncommon in the cardboard boat world. So now we got the glue out of the way, let's start putting that glue to use and building some layers. 
Start off by building the frame of your cardboard boat, and I recommend building that frame upside down. The reason to build upside down is because it allows you to use weights to hold cardboard down on the frame as opposed to trying to clamp up the sides. It's always harder to hold something up and clamp it than it is to hold something down with weights. So start by building the skeleton of your boat, the dividers, and the different room, rooms, I guess you could call them, your crew is sitting in. Compartments is a better term. And get those on the floor and then layer your first layer of cardboard over them. And make sure that first layer looks great because that's going to be what all the rest of your layers conform to. Now that we've got the first layer on, it's time to put on a second layer. But when you're putting on that second layer, remember to rotate the grain of the cardboard. If you look down the cardboard, you'll see these little grooves or flutes running through the cardboard in one direction. You want to take those flutes and turn them 90 degrees to the previous layer. This causes you to have structural strength and integrity in the boat design. So you put that layer on and you continue this layering process until you have somewhere between three and seven layers. A good number I've come up with is right around the five layer mark. It's just above having a flexible side that really makes you nervous and just below going way into the overweight category where it's just, it's overkill. Let's face it, it's overkill. Now that your boat is together, it's time to look at some ways of sealing up all those little miscellaneous cracks and seams. So a lot of times what you forget about is the seams on top of the cardboard boat itself. So you want to make sure that any seams on the sides that are left open are not left open. You cover them with duct tape or you fold cardboard over them is a great way. The other less used method is to use craft paper and cover it with the craft paper soaked in glue. Of these methods, I'd say the easiest is probably the duct tape one, and all of them will be effective. In the end, some of these methods are really just for show. If you want to have a polished side, you're probably better off going with craft paper because you can sand it into the cardboard. Now that we've got the boats hull together, we need to think about making sure all the compartments are watertight. You've got these compartments for a reason. Don't let there be holes in between. For example, I've seen in my own design, sometimes when I pull the sides up, I forget and there's little holes going under in the corner. I take cardboard and I make sure to patch all those up, make it look solid, and make sure no water can get from one compartment into the next compartment. Otherwise, it would defeat the purpose of the compartments. And that pretty much concludes the construction section of this video. Now on the final details which includes the paint. What type of paint should I use, Patron? I get that question all the time, and I'm happy to answer the cheapest one, the and the latex one. The reason you use latex and not oil is because oil does not stick to cardboard. Don't ask me why, I'm not a scientist, but I know oil does not stick to cardboard because I've tried it, and other designers have tried it. So use latex paint, and I don't recommend paying for paint. I recommend going to your neighbors and into your basement of your team members' houses and seeing if anybody's got any old paint lying around. Many times they do, and I've never had to actually go and buy paint except when I chose to. So, it's always better to use free stuff, right? Great. Now that we've got the paint out of the way, let's think about decorations. And oftentimes teams forget that some things probably should not go on the lake with you, like that giant palm tree on top of your boat. A couple of reasons. One, it's a safety hazard, and two, you're going to be catching a lot of wind and get blown off the course. So, be sure to know what comes off the boat when you're racing and what stays on the boat. If you look at my firehouse boat before the race and during the race, you'll notice that a lot of the decorations I have on it are taken off simply because they could fall off of the boat or get in a team member's way while they are growing. And as far as painting the boat and special techniques for that, I've got a couple videos up on painting flames, but that technique really goes a long way toward showing just how to outline and stencil stuff using paint. So there you have it. We've made it all the way to the end. Now it's time for my three pro tips. Ready? One. Make sure you have a team captain on the walk. And this is a straightforward thing that a lot of teams forget. You need somebody in charge to call directions. 
Not just anyone should be on the lake going, left, right, left, right. No, you need one person to clearly say, this side stop, this side go forward. Okay, once you have that cap captain established, move to phase two. Practice on the water when at all possible. You have a canoe, take your team on the canoe. Practice turning, practice going straight, practice stopping, starting. Anything that you think could be helpful during the race, practice on the water beforehand. If that's not an option for you, practice by simply sitting on the ground in the formation you would for the race. This also works for when you don't have a boat that can say, realistically seat eight people to practice in. For example, I've had a boat that seats eight person. We had to go with this method, and then we practiced as four person teams in canoes. So this leads into my third point. When you're calling commands to your team, try not to use left and right. The reason not to use left and right is people get it confused all the time. Hey, use my right hand, use my left hand. Okay, it gets confusing. A better method is one, use people's names. For example, your person in charge of the right side could be named Kim. Tell Kim, call Kim's side stop if you want that side to stop growing. Call Kim's side start if you want them to start. Another method is to use paint. You can paint on the sides of the, or the inside, excuse me, of compartments. You could have yellow paint on one side and red paint on the other side. Yellow side, stop. Yellow side, go. Red side, stop. Red side, go. All go. Forward. Those are the commands I like to use to steer a cardboard boat successfully, and they'll make you a lot faster and able to avoid incidents in the race, like running into another boat, much better. So, thanks for watching this video. For more like it, please subscribe to my channel. And as always, have a fantastic day. Major Contraptions, signing out.